Most people consider the proper design of databases to be something that is a right pain. We've got all this normalization, and normalization is hard, and yeah, and amateurs just find it terribly difficult. Yes, you do need to have your database properly normalized for it to work, but, and there's a big but, you don't have to go through the normalization process necessarily. There is another technique, one that I'm going to explore in this series. Database design is really quite easy, but you've got to get the technique right. Good design means that you get easy maintenance. A database that is simple to maintain is going to save you hours of time. If you imagine that you normalize your database and then somebody comes along and says, I've had this idea. Wouldn't it be good if we could, and you think, I've got to go through all this normalization process again. Gosh, that's a pain. But if you use the object-oriented approach in this system, you don't have to go through the whole thing again. It all relies on normalization. For a relational database to work, it must be in third normal form. But the technique I'm going to explore in this series gives you your database design in fourth normal form and without going through the other normalization processes. It takes a little bit of getting your head round at first, but once you've done a couple of examples, you'll find you're doing it automatically. There's a six-step cycle. Difficult to say sometimes, but there is a six-step cycle, and we're going to go through each of these in the other videos. And then the final video is going to be exploring what happens when the user says, I've had an idea. The example in this set of videos is going to be a second-hand bookshop. I'd like you to imagine that you're working for somebody who owns a second-hand bookshop. And that person would like a proper database, something that's going to be really useful. Imagine that each book has a card in it, and each card has an ID number. The user of the database would like to keep a, a log of each transaction. They'd like to keep a log of where this book was bought, when it was bought, and who it was bought from. They'd also like to know when it was purchased. Was it purchased quickly or did it stay in the shop for a long period of time? They'd like to know whether it was bought by auction or by private sale. Many people come into a bookshop, second-hand bookshop, and say, hey, I've got this pile of books and I'd like money for them. Or alternatively, I'd like that book up there, that one. That needs to be kept track of. And each book belongs to one or more categories. So it might be a science fiction book, or it might be humour, or it might be history, or science, whatever. Each book should be categorised, so that if somebody comes into the shop and says, I'd like a book that's science fiction and funny, you can enter the category science fiction and funny, humour, and it will bring up a list of all the books that fall into both categories. That's the sort of database we're going to be looking at in this sequence of videos.